In this video, let's talk about arrays. So let's say you have a bunch of values, let's say five values. Now, instead of storing them in five different variables, we can store that in one particular sequence, right? Or one variable you can say. Now in this array, you can store five values. So let's say we have this array here, and then this will have a name to it. Now, of course, this data will be stored in a memory, right? And every memory will have something called a memory location. So let's say we are storing this data in at the location 101. Now, what happens is every time you store a normal variable, let's say a primitive type, let's say int, and depending upon how much size it takes. So every type will have a different size to it depending upon a language. But let's say we have two bytes. Now inside your memory, let's say if you create a normal variable, which is int a equal to five. Now this particular a variable will take some space in the memory. Of course, let's say two bytes, and it will also have an address to it, right? So every time you, in your programming language, you say, hey, I want a value for a, the program will jump to the memory location by searching for the address and it will get the value. But the problem is when it comes to array, we have multiple values, right? And we only have one address. Now that's tricky. Of course, each element here will take the same size. If you say int take two bytes, the complete array will take 10 bytes is because every element will take two bytes. How will you allocate memory now? That's an issue. So what you do is the array will have a memory, but that will that is only pointing to the first location, right? So if you say the, the memory for this is 101, the first element is 101. What about the second element? Now that's where we have to use something called a index values. So let's say, the first element is look is at one zero one, so it will have a index value which is zero. The second element is one, then two, then three, then four. Right now, for five values, the index value starts from zero and ends at four. Now, why zero is because we start we have a memory allocated right one zero one, which represents the first element, so we don't have to give one to it. So what you do is the next element is plus one. That's why one, two, three, and then you can just get it right. So one zero one. Let, let's say if you want to get the Third element, you have to say plus two. That's how you do it. So you got the values, you got the index, and you also got a memory address to it. Now with this array, as we already talked about ADT, which is abstract data type, we should be able to perform some operations. Now what operation you can perform on this array? Now we can perform something called a read operation. So what is read? So let's say you want to get the value of an index number three. Now what, what you do in this case is you say, okay, my array name is nums, and then for this nums, I want the value at index three. So in different languages, we have different representation for this, but let's say this is common one. So nums bracket of three. Now what your computer will do is it will directly jump to the memory address. It's very simple for, the, for that, right? So you will say one zero one plus three, you will get the value. So that's how you do it. Now reading is very easy and computer takes way less time to jump to that particular area is because the computer knows the memory, right? Because you, you are mentioning the index value. Reading is good. It's fast also. What about searching? Now, this is tricky because when you're searching, you're not searching for an index. You are basically searching for the value now. So let's say from this array, I want to search what is 17. Now, in this case, your computer has no idea where 17 is because computer only knows about the memory address. Of course, the values are there, but computer has no idea in which location we have that value. And do we even have that value? So what a computer will do is it will start from the first location. So basically you have to write a code to search from the first location. You have to check, is the first one 17? If yes, good, we can exit. No, then you have to jump to the next location. Is it matching? If yes, good. If not, next. Matching, yes, no, next. So basically you have to search each element, right? And let's say the element is at the end you are searching, you are basically tracking to all the different locations. So this is time consuming, right? What if you have a array of, let's say thousand values to, to move between these values, it will take some time. What about inserting? Now this will be tricky is because, see, if you want to insert a element, what do you think, will it, like, will it take a lot of time? See, if you want to insert the element at the end, that's very simple. You can get the size of the array because we also have to have that option of getting a size of the array, right? So let's say you have five values. You, you will simply jump to the sixth location, which is index five. And then you will say, okay, I want to add a value here. Let's say the value, value is 21 and you can add the value. It, it's, it's very fast. But what if you want to add a value in between? So let's say you want to add that value at the second location. So after the first, you want to add the new value. Now what you will do is you don't have a space there, right? You can't simply create a new space. You can create space at the end. So what you do is you basically have to move all the elements and you, it's not like you can simply move the elements. What you do is 
create a new block. So move the second last element now to the last block. Then again, you have to move every element one by one. Then you can add your value to the second location. So if you are inserting at the end, that's fine. But if you're inserting in between, that will take a lot of time. And that depends upon the number of elements after the position which, which you're adding. What about deleting? See, deleting from, a, from the end is always welcome is because you're not affecting your array in total. But what if you want to delete a particular element from between? Now, you can't simply delete from the between, right? You have to delete the end block. But how will you move? So again, when you, have to de when you want to delete this, just replace all the values, right? So that's, that's tricky. So it will take a lot of time, depend upon how many elements you have after that index value. Now, why we are talking about all this thing? Array was simple, right? We can perform the operations. The important thing here is time taken for each operation. And it's not about CPU time. If you're thinking, uh, my computer is super fast, it will be happening very fast there. See, in the world, we have different computers and different computers have different CPU power, different RAM power, different configuration. And that's why let's not calculate the speed of our, uh, speed of a code or the algorithm by the actual runtime. Important is the number of steps it takes. Example, let's say if you want to insert the element at the end, that's good. If you want to insert the element in between, that will take a lot of steps. It's because you want to move the elements, right? Now, in the upcoming videos, we are, we are going to also talk about time complexity, which is a very important concept, something called big, big O notation. But yeah, we'll talk about that in detail later. I know you're excited to hear that. But important thing is, when you write a code, think about the number of steps your code takes because that defines your time complexity. And if you say my algorithm is good, it should be time efficient. Okay, so for the same particular operation, you can write two different codes. Example on the screen, if you want to print, let's say 10 numbers from one to 10, and maybe you just want to print the even numbers, we have two options there. Which one is good? Of course, you will let me know in the comment sections, but the code which is not iterating between all the values is good, right? So that's how you define how your algorithm is good. Now we can also expand the array example. Let's say if you have a sorted array. So let's say you have an array and this is sorted by default. So every time you insert the element, it gets sorted by, by default. You don't have to mention where you want to insert this. Example, let's say you have a bunch of values here, all are sorted, and now you want to insert the element which is 11. Now, if you want to insert 11 there, where it will get inserted. Of course, it will search for the location. Let's say we have a number nine. It will get inserted after nine. Now the question is, how do your code knows where is nine? So you have to basically search. You have to match. Is it greater than? Is it greater than? Is it greater than? And then you have to insert. So that will take a lot of time. But what if you're inserting in between? You have to shift all the elements. So that's about the array and a basic introduction of time complexity. We'll discuss that in detail later. So I hope you enjoyed the video. And in the upcoming videos, we'll talk about more about different data structures.